You're welcome to the gavel. I'm Linda Kibi. The 10th Assembly is expected to be inaugurated in June 2023, and it will be the most politically diverse assembly since 1999, as we're having more political parties having seats in Parliament. Now, already, the contest for the positions of principal officers of the 10th Assembly is on, and some lawmakers elect have officially announced the intention to contest. The race for the position of principal officers of the 10th Assembly is heating up as some federal lawmakers elect in the Senate have signaled interest in running and are reported to be lobbying their colleagues for support. Two seven lawmakers, the Senate Chief Whip, Senator Oji Kalu, and the Chairman, Committee on Appropriation, Senator Jibim Baral, made the intentions known to journalists during the week. Like I told you people, Senator Kalu is asking the All Progressives Congress APC to zone the seat to Abia North Senatorial District and says with his position as a chief whip of the Ninth Senate, he is the most ranking senator from the Southeast and therefore deserves the position. Yes, I'm ready to run for Senate President if the party zone it to my zone because the party is supreme. Whether they want to zone it, they should zone it to my village so nobody will contest it against me. I don't even want them to zone it to the South. The party should zone it to Iberi in my ward. So, because I'm the only senator from there, you can manufacture another senator from another local government or from another place in Abia. So, I would like the party to zone it to me with my name. If they can do that, it will be very good because uh, President Tinibu needs uh, people of high character to turn around this economy to make sure that we work for the masses and make laws that to enable him to turn around the economy. I'm an economic person. You know, I'm an entrepreneur. find myself in the Senate. Let me be honest with you. If we practice true democracy, I should not be in contest with anybody in this position. Because apart from the Senate President himself, Deputy Senate President Mogage, the Senate Leader Gobier, I'm the highest ranking Thank member you. of the Senate. Uh, On his part, Senator Jibrin Barao says he has the competence, capacity and experience to lead the 10th Assembly. On the matter of religious considerations, bearing in mind that he is of the same faith with the President and Vice President-elect, he says religious sentiment should not be a factor in determining who will lead the 10th National Assembly. We have gone beyond that sentiment in this country. The key thing is the, the, the uh, President-elect said it. He said what is going to be his, you know, watchword is competence. Is competence. You don't bring in, you know, sentiments where competence is needed. Or that we run into trouble. We've gone beyond that. The fact that we are accepted to take the candidature, to elect the candidature of Aswaja Ahmed Tinubu and Senator Shetima and get them voted and they became victorious in the election that just that was just concluded has 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 collapsed that kind of uh, line of idea i am the most experienced among those who are aspiring to lead the senate in the tent, uh, national assembly it's all about ranking all right and uh, well if you go about political expediency that's talking about uh, uh, the the political angle to it i also I'm also number one because I come to the northwestern part of this country where we gave the president the highest votes and we are willing to double that effort. The APC has not officially zoned the seat of the leadership positions for the 10th Assembly. Some other senators elect have unofficially indicated interest in running for the leadership positions in the 10th Assembly. They include Senator Godswe Lapavio, Senator Sani Musa, and Senator Dave Omahe. It's not clear at the moment if the current Senate President, Ahmed Lawan, will be running for the top position in the 10th Senate. On March 7th and 8th, 2023, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, issued certificates of return to senators and members-elect. A total of 101 senators-elect and 326 members-elect were given certificates of return and they will form the 10th Assembly which will be inaugurated in June 2023. The 10th Assembly will be the most politically diverse assembly since 1999, as we're having more political parties having seats in Parliament. 
We're also going to have a 10th assembly dominated by new legislators. At least nearly 70% of them are first time lawmakers. Now, will these have implications on legislative performance? We had a chat with the founder of Order Paper, Mr. Uke Epia, to discuss these issues. We are seeing unfolding before us a picture of um, um, a National Assembly that has um, uh, more potential to be averse to being a rubber stamp. Let me put it that way. Uh, given the context of the outgoing National Assembly uh, that has been uh, largely regarded as a rubber stamp, um, you know, uh, the incoming National Assembly, because it's going to have representation from lots more parties, political parties than we have seen, promises, you know, uh, to be averse, uh, theoretically speaking, uh, to uh, being um, a psychic of the presidency. Well, looking at the issue of the number of women, we have seen that the tent assembly we are having going to have fewer women in the tent coming into the tenth assembly, particularly in the Senate. We only have three women, at least for now, coming into the Senate. What does that speak to you? What does that tell you? It's a story of retrogression in terms of uh, uh, gender um, advancement in our democratic journey. Um, if a Senate of 109 members uh, can only accommodate three females, uh, then uh, given that we had um, eight or so females in the expiring Ninth National Assembly, uh, it's clearly a story of retrogression. Uh, it shows that um, uh, rather than trying to catch up with other countries, even in Africa, that are doing well in respect to, you know, moving towards gender uh, equity and equality, uh, like Rwanda, like, you know, um, you know, we are moving backwards. And uh, this is for, you look at it and you see that uh, um, it's not that, you know, uh, it's not a shame on the women folk. It's actually uh, something that um, the male folk should be concerned about, you know, uh, because uh, the political system that allows this to happen is largely controlled by men. You know, the political party recruitment uh, process, the nomination process at political parties, you know, that does not allow space for women to thrive, you know, in getting tickets, nominations for political office and in getting the requisite support if they have tickets indeed. Uh, it's one that is largely controlled by male folk. And so it's, it's uh, for us something of deep introspection for the male folk in our, our democratic development. And now one of the things that um, is usually ha or has been lost in the conversation of who emerges as the, the leadership in the National Assembly is the issue of competence. We, 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 we are really not hearing about the competence factor for the leadership. We hear more about the religious considerations, the ethnic considerations. Does this not worry you? It is very worrisome. And if you recall, that's why I said earlier on that the jostle uh, for these offices are driven by selfish, you know, interests, by the ambitions of these individuals, and of course by the political party, by the dominant dominant uh, interest in the political parties. You know, so all of these conversation uh, does not speak, unfortunately, to uh, to character, to antecedents, and to capacity. And given that these are national offices, these are offices that play very, very vital role in the arm of governments, you know, the provisions to be a check and a balance on the executive uh, that has the responsibility, the core function of making laws for the good governance and welfare of citizens, you know, good governance of the country and welfare of citizens. It is, of course, you know, uh, worrisome that the conversation uh, does not include the competence, the character and antecedents of individuals who want to be uh, president of the Senate, who want to be speaker of the House of Representatives, who want to be deputy speaker, and who want to be deputy president of the Senate. 
until we have these conversations, you know, uh, expanded to cover these, you know, considerations, I'm afraid uh, we would be having um, a situation where it is just all about um, the selfish interests of these individuals, you know, and the partisan interests of the greatest interest uh, of the dominant uh, political interest of the political parties. We know that um, high-level lobbying has started I think for some people, it even has started even from the Ninth Assembly on who would be, who would pop, make up the leadership of both the Senate and the House of Representatives. And so we're wondering, you know, in, in your opinion, wh where do you think this is going to swing? Who are the likely contenders for the position of Senate and Deputy Senate President, Speaker and Deputy Speaker, and even the minority and majority caucuses? Where do you think, uh, how much, um, how much um, leverage, you know, would the political parties have on whoever emerges in both houses? If you look at the trajectory uh, of... Um, uh, the emergence of Prince presiding officers of the National Assembly, uh, you will see that uh, from 1990 now up until now, uh, that's a space of six electoral circles, that's, um, yeah, uh, up to 24 years. You will find that virtually every zone, in terms of geopolitical jostling, uh, has had a share, one way or the other, you know, at least on, in one having to, uh, you know, clinch one uh, presiding office or the, or the order. Um, you would also see too that um, in terms of um, you know because you can't discuss these issues uh, with in, in isolation, you also have to consider uh, the, uh, the the religious intonation. You know, you would also see that there's been a mixture of you know both uh, uh, the Christian and the Muslim faith. You know, which are the two dominant uh, religions that we have in the country. So, in terms of religion, in terms of geopolitical basis, we have seen virtually all six geopolitical. Uh, regions of the country have a go one way or the other in either you know for or especially with respect to the four uh, presiding offices uh, that's the office of the president of the senate uh, the deputy president of the senate uh, the speaker and uh, the deputy speaker of the house of representatives respectively uh, but if you really want to take a close look a closer look at it uh, from 1999 until date and you want to push the argument for geopolitical balance, uh, you will see, especially given what we have now, uh, with the picture already imagined uh, for the presidency, where you have the president coming from the southwest, uh, the vice president coming from the uh, northeast, and uh, both of them are Muslims. Uh, I mean, that introduced another coloration to the conversation. But what I was saying is that you would find that the, the region of the country that has not had a shot, you know, or that has not had, well, let's say, a shot at the most, uh, um, is the South South. Uh, and um, that's because they've never had the office of the president of the Senate before. Uh, and, um, you know, the highest that they have had. Uh, is the office of the deputy speaker is the office of the uh, deputy president of the senate now let's take a look at some major activities in the national assembly during the week the senate is asking the federal government to direct the police and armed forces to build up personnel and equipment to ensure effective security in kwande local government area of benway state which has been a target of persistent attacks the upper chamber made this request during plenary session on Wednesday, March 22nd, after a federal lawmaker, Senator Gabriel Suswam, brought to the attention of the Senate attacks on two communities in Kwande local government areas on March 2nd and 3rd, 2023. He says the attacks by suspected herdsmen left 100 people dead and full displacement of people in the community. Note further that after days of heavy attacks on the aforementioned communities, most of which are located on Nigeria international border between Kwande and Cameroon. Over 100 persons were reportedly killed, while several others suffered gunshot injuries. All the federal government to direct the Nigerian, the Nigerian police and Nigerian armed forces to beef up personnel and equipment deployment to Jatoka and in Kogen in order to ensure effective surveillance security response and protection of the aforementioned district. The Senate is to constitute a committee to examine why President Buhari did not assent to 19 constitutional amendment bills sent to him for assent. Senate, I serve it. 
Senate President Ahmed Lawan disclosed this during legislative proceedings on Tuesday, March 21st. The upper chamber transmitted to the president 35 constitutional amendment bills passed by the National Assembly and State Houses of Assembly. However, President Buhari assented to 16 out of the 35 constitutional amendment bills last week. Senate President Ahmad Lawan commended President Buhari for assenting to the constitutional amendment bills, particularly the bills to guarantee the independence of state assemblies and the judiciary. For the 19 bills that Mr. President did not sign, did not assent to, I believe that there is need for us to do further engagement between the National Assembly and the executive arm of government. We will constitute I think we already have our Constitution Review Committee to engage the executive arm of government. I don't know whether it will be the Office of the uh, Attorney General or the executive maybe constitute a small committee. Let's go through the, the items, the, those bills that have not been assented. What are the issues? Are those issues issues that we can deal with immediately? Because we are putting a lot of resources, a lot of time to produce those bills. The 2023 general elections are largely over, but some candidates who lost in elections are taking the matter to the courts. The FCT senatorial candidate of the New Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, is threatening to seek judicial redress in the courts. The FCT senatorial election was won by Mrs. Ireti Kingibe from the Labour Party. Our logos were changed on the ballot papers, which was uh, something that has caused NNPP a great loss in this 2020 general election, which we will never forget about. So, we are highly disappointed. We are highly, highly disappointed in NNPP. And we are not going to relent. We have to seek for justice, not just for ourselves, for our people, for our supporters, but for democracy. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mr. Femi Bajabi Amila, says the 2023 presidential elections were fair and credible. Speaking at the resumption of legislative proceedings at the House of Representatives, Mr. Bajabi Amila says it is time for the country to move forward. He, however, assured Nigerians that the Ninth House of Representatives will continue to serve the Nigerian people till their last day in office as a parliament. The declaration of results will not by itself suffice to assuage the passions or calm the tensions aroused by this electoral competition. For that, we need time and the deliberate efforts of political, religious, and social and economic leaders acting in recognition of the fact that while elections will come and go, our highest imperative remains the progress of Nigeria and the prosperity of her people. I wish to thank the Chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission and all the staff of the Commission for their hard work and commitment to ensuring free and fair elections across the country. I wish to also express my gratitude to the men and women of the security agencies who ensured the worst predictions of crisis and conflict did not come to pass. Any objective assessment of these elections will show marked improvements from prior outings. This is not to suggest perfection but to acknowledge evident progress in our collective efforts to ensure elections we can all be proud of. Amendments to our, national, our nation's electoral laws by the legislature, pronouncements by the judiciary, and operational reforms by the Electoral Commission have significantly improved elections in Nigeria since 1999. The amendments to the Electoral Act by the Ninth National Assembly have been particularly instrumental in improving the elections process through the use of technology tools to facilitate voter accreditation and transmission of results. The House of Representatives has passed the bill for an act to repeal the Customs and Excise Management Act 2004 and other customs and excise legislations and enacted the Nigeria Customs Service Act 2022. The new bill, which seeks to ensure that the Nigeria Customs Service can raise its revenue generation for the country using technology, also mandates the President to only appoint the Controller General of the Service from among the rank and file of the service. 
The sponsor of the bill and chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Customs and Excise, Mr. Leke Abejide, says the bill will also enable the Nigeria Customs Service to get more revenue to run the service, thereby recruiting more officers to man its critical stations across the country. The funding is going to come out from this bill. They will be taking their funding from 4% FOB, freight on board. Doesn't matter, even though nobody pays duty on a particular item important to the country, customs will still get 4% to fund their own operations. The second thing that is there in the bill is there in section 14 that uh, whoever is going to be the Controller General of Customs, it's going to come within the service. That is, the president shall appoint a career officer not below the rank of assistant controller general of customs to be controller general of customs. This is a major achievement as well. And then the third one is the the, the uh, personnel are not enough because they cannot fund the recruitment. But with this one now, they will be able to recruit minimum ten thousand officers at a go and they will be able to pay them. The technology now that has come was not there when the old act was in operation. So it's not there, the single window and the rest of them, now they will be able to use technology to achieve whatever they want to achieve in terms of revenue collection. The House of Representatives has passed a motion compelling all commercial banks in the country to ensure their online platforms and applications begin to work effectively to ease the hardship on Nigerians who have had to resort to the use of the platforms due to the cashless policy of the central bank. Following a motion by Mr. Sergius Ogun, who explained that many lawmakers had received multiple petitions from their constituents on various hitches like unsuccessful electronic bank transfers and point of sale POS service failure, which had brought untold hardship to Nigerians. The House urged the Central Bank of Nigeria to direct all commercial banks in the country to immediately overhaul their online and electronic platforms for efficiency. The House also mandated its Committee on Banking and Currency to ensure compliance and report back to the House in four weeks. The House is disturbed that the ineffectiveness or difficulty in using internet banking services across the online banking platforms of most commercial banks in Nigeria has brought untold hardship, suffering and difficulties on Nigerians in the past three months. The House is worried that if nothing is done by the Central Bank of Nigeria and the commercial banks to address these difficulties or ineffectiveness, Nigerians will continue to suffer untold hardship and loss of monies to unsuccessful electronic bank transactions. The House resolves one, all the Central Bank of Nigeria CBN to direct all commercial banks in the country to immediately overhaul their existing online slash electronic banking platform for efficiency and ease of conducting electronic banking operations. This is what we call it a day on this week's edition of The Gavel. If you have any views on any of the issues discussed, please email us on thegavel at channelstv.com. Thank you for staying with us and see you again next week.